All right, guys, I'm in uh, another argument over health care, this time more so with uh, single-payer people. And um, it's a pretty civil argument at this point. And um, I'm hoping one day, next week I hope to have a Bernie supporter for a Hangouts interview, possibly more people down the line. I think I'm going to focus on a lot of those things in the future. Just because I, I, I really want to try to get across to them that there are places in the world where this system is in place, but they can't go and portray it as this rousing success when so many of those countries, you see people simply leaving. They don't have jobs or opportunities there. I don't think it's a, I really don't think it's a coincidence. Um, you have this story. It's called Epic Court Battle Over Private Health Care Rages in British Columbia Courts. Um, and the reason that I'm bringing this up is that we often think of it as, you know, Americans are so militant about, you know, generally privatized health care, with the exception, of course, of the progressive uh, sector and, and you know liberals and whatever they want they, they're not so hot about it but there is a large degree of loyalty of, among a lot of Americans to private health care if not if not it doesn't mean that they're fans of health insurance you know it just means that they're not as open to private health care and on the Canadian side most people believe that Canadians are super proud of their health care system well it turns out that their system is mostly held held up and um, you know basically maintained by um, some sort of charter that means that Canadian health care must be um, equal access for everybody that means that uh, private clinics cannot function and that, that to me is kind of um, that's the beginning of the slope towards a, ma a massive decline in healthcare quality. Okay, um, look, doctors don't work in uh, basically an assembly line. They they have to have the freedom to define a lot of their own parameters. Um, you know, obviously you can't you can't just make up procedures that you're going to perform on on a human body or, or you know in, in the case of psychiatrists on the human mind but you can't limit people to the same box you can't you can't just put rules in for literally everything there's always you know what was the um, idiom that I think it was Abraham Lincoln said there's more than two ways to skin a cat um, you know we, we're dealing with an issue where uh, there's, the government is stifling Canadian uh, innovation. It's stifling a Canadian um, uh, versatility and, and uh, adjustability for the healthcare system, and it's it's led to a, a lawsuit known as uh, Canby Surgery Center, which uh, is totally private, and they're suing the government along with some of their clients. And I believe recently the lawsuit had to be deferred or dropped or something because the clients had run out of money in order to maintain the lawsuit and the courts had, had and, and I guess the government who they were suing, the provincial government had stalled for time and basically made it so that these plaintiffs could not pay for their own legal representation and time in court. So. Um, essentially, we have a system that is run um, to the neglect of the people in order to, um, you know, take advantage of their lack of real capabilities to defend themselves against this healthcare system. Uh, I, I'm saying all along, look, uh, it sounds easy to you. It sounds easy to you. I, I believe a lot of these people are very earnest that they want single-payer health care. You know, I'm not, I'm not objecting to a lot of these um, Bernie liberals and, and, and progressives, even though I, I'm not objecting to that part. There's a lot of other things I think that they're complete retards on. Now, 
in terms of single payer healthcare. I understand that a lot of them think that it's more simple. It's not. It really is not. Um, first of all, you have uncapped expenses. It could be that in one year, the required, um, you know, the required outlay of funds for the medical services could be, let's say, double or triple the projected amount of money, the, the amount of money that was budgeted. What's supposed to be done in those cases? Are we supposed to just borrow money, you know, the way that we do for defense? And 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 as for defense spending, by the way, you should know. I mean, you you a lot of you. Liberals, you'll ask the question: Well, if, if you're against uh, free health care, uh, uh, then uh, what is it? You're for free wars? I mean, you're for killing, and you're against uh, giving people medical care. How can you call yourself pro-life? Well, it turns out that I'm a fiscal conservative across the board. I am against the Trump spending bill on um, military defense. I'm against a lot, a lot of these uh, boondoggles. I want a more limited government that includes defense, that includes a lot of these other Trump, um, you know, spending focuses. The FMLA, I'm, I'm, I also don't see the need for it. Okay, it could be because I don't have a family to support and take time off for. But you know, what am I supposed to do? Look after the interests of people that have contrary interests to mine? It doesn't work that way. That I'm, I'm going. And I'm going to promote the values and ideas that I think are going to make this country better. And if you think otherwise, then fine. You know, if you want to promote single-payer health care, fine. But stop holding up Canada as a, as a model of success. In 2005, Quebec, the first province where um, universal health care was applied in Canada, um, its lower court... Um, ruled that the ban against private health care was unconstitutional. So they only allowed, in the end, instead of privatizing health care itself, they privatized health insurance, thereby allowing Canada to, you know, suffer some of the same crap that we do here. You know, um, over here, I think that the insurance industry has gone way out of whack, but it's also because the way that people treat their insurance has gone out of whack. You know, there's people claiming uh, prescription meds all the time, even though they don't need them, especially painkillers, that they or or getting a uh, prescription, I should say. So, you know, there's uh, here's here's these um, statements. The BC case has so far been before three judges. Patrick Greer, a ne McGreer, a neurologist and former social credit cabinet minister, took the witness stand this week to underline endemic problems with BC health services. It's insanity. There isn't a place in the world, except maybe North Korea, that has adopted the Canadian model. Why not? Because it's the worst in the world, said McGreer in, a, in an interview. So this, this was a neurologist who was a fairly right-wing physician um, and, and cabinet minister. So he's decidedly against health insurance being public. And he, he was one of 107 witnesses being called to testify in the fight to allow the public to opt to pay for medical care. Um, and then it says, despite increased operating room openings and surgeries, more British Columbians are on wait lists than ever. The total number increasing from 77,000 or so in March 2015 to 85,000 by the end of 2016, the, away, the average wait time for an elective surgery, meaning a surgery not needed to save a patient's life, is now six weeks, seven weeks. McGear blames chronic wait lists, idle surgeons, and closed surgeries on hospital budget restrictions that force, that force a top-level administration, a top-heavy administration, to ration services. He's noticed introduce, He's convinced introducing a two-level system would solve everything, pointing to Germany and other European countries that have none of Canada's problems. Um, so that continues, but public health care, long considered the jewel in Canada's crown, is a divisive issue. Many fear allowing private pay options and private insurance would water down the public system and create a health services class system. That you see the same thing with school choice, by the way. The, the BC Health Coalition consulted economists and former automotive union spokesman 
Jim Stanford as an expert in the trial. He sees public health care as a major Canadian asset that both attracts businesses and ensures ha healthier people. It saves lawmakers about 10,000 a year per employee, he said. Well, wouldn't that be corporate welfare then? So, you know, enough about this crap. Um, there's also this blurb here. Okay, it says, um, in 2007, Claude Castengay, the, the architect of, of Quebec's public health care system and the first of Canada's seven, or, 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 you know, the first of Canada's nationwide different um, public health care systems, or, or really provincial-wide um, health care systems, so he was asked to review Quebec's, and he concluded that Canadian health care was in crisis. We thought we, couldn't re we could resolve the system's problems by rationing services or injecting massive amounts of new money into it. His remedy, we are proposing to give a greater role in the, to the private sector so that people can exercise freedom of choice. So don't, don't tell me, don't tell me anymore about this nonsense about, you know, every other country in the world has great health care. We don't. Um, if, if they had great health care, they wouldn't be trying to move it in the direction that we're already located in. So anyway, this is Ramon with Bold Like a Leopard. You got Chef Leopard on Facebook at Chef Leopard or Facebook.com slash Chef Leopard at Chef Leopard on Twitter and um, you know Chef Leopard it's a uh, vid.me slash Chef Leopard and um, then there's the blog starting leopard.blogspot.com have a great night uh, I think you know I'm feeling a little optimistic I, I think that we will see some positive change and I haven't seen it yet uh, uh, in terms of the real law. I think that we have a ways to go. We have to keep fighting for it to um, basically do the real steps. This this, Obam this Obamacare replacement that um, Paul Ryan put forward does not do the trick, in my opinion, at all. We, got, we can't let it be the final word because otherwise they're going to swing the pendulum back against us. So have a great night. This is Ramon, Bold Like a Leopard. And um, have a great weekend.